Hi everybody, how are you? Um, hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, been quite busy already this morning. I apologize for not able to give anybody a certain time that I'm going to be able to do this or um, just hopping on basically when it's convenient for me <laughs> instead of everyone else. Um, I know a lot of you are busy yourself or, or some of you may still have to uh, go or are able to still go to work and then come back and you can watch this. That's the beauty of live is if you miss it live you can watch the watch it later. Um, but my day not good morning Pastor Justin. Good morning Goldinger. Good morning Miss um, Chapman. Good morning everybody. Um, Honestly, um, being quarantined has not affected our lifestyle that much because we do everything from our house. Um, we work from our house. My husband and I both work from home. Um, Harrison Ministries, um, we were actually in the process of looking for property to build uh, a home base for Harrison Ministries, a discipleship center that is not, um, that's only been put off, not, not, it's just delayed. <laughs> and um, so uh, to have our uh, discipleship and home offices uh, differently. And then we've always homeschooled um, Isabella. So her school has not been interrupted and, um, every there's not too much that's been interrupted so um and then when we do leave to go have fun as a family it's normally out to brown county we do hike we hike when the weather's good um in the spring and the summer we're normally hiking every day <laughs> so that's what we do as a as a family is for fun um, I want to get into verses 9 and 10. I decided to do them together because this is kind of, this is, this is a place where nine, where in verses 9 and 10 where Psalms begins to refer back to verse 1. And um, it's a powerful, these two verses are so powerful and they're probably two of the most popular um, in this whole entire chapter and so I wanted to talk about these two verses and and kind of give you some def give you some uh, definitions of some of these things according to the translation of it and again I am no Bible teacher you know, there are people that walk in the office of teacher. My husband does. And um, they they are just incredible. We have some incredible, incredible, anointed, appointed Bible teachers out there. My gift is in the prophetic. So me doing this for you every day is out of my comfort zone. Just know that I'm aware of that. <laughs> So, uh, if you're like, mm, I've never seen Sister Rana like this. Well, it's me either. <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of difficult. Hi Megan, how are you? Hi Miss Pat in Kentucky. I sure do love you so much. I have never forgotten um, my Kentucky friends. I just honor you today, Miss Pat Elliot. I've known Miss Pat years and years and years and years and years, and she is an incredible um, prayer warrior. We had some amazing times. I've, I've visited Miss Pat's house lots of times. Um, she's Miss Pat. You've had quite a bit of difficulties throughout the years you've lost loved ones incredible loss to your family throughout the years that I knew you and you one of the things that I think about you is you are a soldier you have just pushed your way through and continue to 
um, be Christ-like in, in every situation. That's I just thought about that. That's just an amazing thought. Okay, are you guys ready? Um, Psalms 91. I'm going to say it every 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 video because there are some people that may watch one video and they don't watch another or some people are watching every video and everybody's different depending on where they're at and what they're doing and um, there's a lot of people there's people out here that that are great at studying the Word of God and they have that anointing and and um, they are dwelling and they've they've researched the scripture for themselves and the Lord has ministered to them about the revelation of the scripture to them and and so I understand that um, um, what depending on where we're at um, how can I say that depending on where we're at it's like the Word of God that we 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 are drawn to is that bread that we need for that day so a lot of people are drawn right now because of this virus to Psalms 91 and that was kind of the thinking behind if if I could give a little insight at all then I would like to do that if I could be a help to anybody then I would like to I would like to do that my revivals have been pushed back of course and normally I'm already on the road but I, we've been pushed back and so if this is the the only way that I can give to someone else then of course I want to jump on here and do that Psalms 91 the chapter like I said before this chapter is powerful from the very first three words um, the, there's no mistake in it whatsoever about um, how it is put together from the the beginning you know what I'm saying he that dwelleth that word dwelleth means to continue to exist it means to remain it also means relationship did you know that it also means marriage or relationship you can have so many different types of relationships. I have relationships with my my mother. I have a relationship with my children. I have a relationship with church people, with friends, with distant cousins. But but my relationship with my husband is different than any other relationship that I have. You know, I adore my children. And I would do anything for them but even my relationship with them and my relationship with my husband is different because different relationships required a different level of intimacy and integrity and so when he says he that dwelleth he's talking about becoming one with Jesus Christ he's talking about being transformed by the renewing of your mind on what the Word of God says relationships put you in having uh, an open heaven so to speak of revelation of his word now just like everybody else there's been lots of times I've opened up the Bible and I've said to I've opened up the Bible or have you ever done this where you had your Bible closed and you're like okay God I need a word from you right now God and you just open it and close your eyes and then you point and you're like okay, okay. and for me if this has happened it's fall on and he begot so and so he begot him and then I'd say okay God let's do it one more time <laughs> let's try this okay God for real this time for real this time I really need you to speak to me and then you open it and you let you know and it's you know all liars have their part in a pit of hell you know something you know just like okay you're like Lord please you know and then eventually you just shut the Bible and, and give up <laughs> have you ever done that I have <laughs> so um, that's there's better ways of doing that for me sometimes sometimes 
I'll just be going about my business and it'll it's a word that I that I can't get out of my spirit or it it's a um it's a thought that comes or maybe I've had a dream and something uh, something was spoken in the dream that triggered a scripture or sometimes maybe it's a song a, a song that will come up in your spirit um, that you can relate it to scripture and then what I'll do is I'll break that down and I'll start seeking because the Bible says if you seek you will find so I'll start seeking and it will every time because there's nothing like the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. It'll lead me to that place in the Word, to that verse, that scripture, that chapter that I need to be fed at that moment. And so it's just a very, that's that, all that is part of this dwelling. And like I said before, if you have plenty of time on your hands, then if you begin. To start uh, studying, dwelling, and dwelleth, and all through the Bible, it'll blow your mind. Matter of fact, I would encourage the pastors on here. If you really want to see a move of God in your in your family, in your churches, in your community, really get a revelation of dwelling and minister that. Because if you can get one, two, three, five, six hundred people to dwell, to continue to exist in Him without opinion, without um, whatever, then man, what a powerful thing. What a powerful thing. Okay, so the first three words, can y'all tell I'm a little tired today? The first three words is, he that dwelleth, he that continue to exist in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid nor for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Here's where we're going. Because thou hast made the Lord, because thou hast made because thou hast made a decision to dwell, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Stop right there. Verse nine is taking you back to the first three words of the chapter. You gotta remember when I first, like I told you, when I first read this, when my son was in Iraq, it was like those three words, he that dwelleth, it was like they just came up off the page and was bold and it's like they had a question mark behind it I told you before in the Bible there is no question mark behind it but in my spirit in my with my prophetic eye I saw it like that I saw it said he that dwelleth is there and I it was like the Holy Spirit was saying is there anybody that's going to remain in me is there anybody that's going to continue to exist is there anybody that's going to lean not to their own understanding but lean and 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 see what the Word of God says for their situation is there anybody gonna quote my word is there anybody gonna stand 
and speak my word? Is there anybody that's going to make me the first resource instead of the last resource? Is there anybody going to uh, dwell, continue to exist? Verse 9 says, because thou hast made the Lord. It was a decision from the get-go. It's always been our decision. You can have as much of him as you want. There's some people, they're satisfied with saying, I'm a Christian. They're satisfied just saying, you know what? Uh, I go down to the so-and-so church. They're satisfied by just going to church, doing a little, hearing a little song, hearing a little message, leaving and going to eat, and then Monday morning go to work and never thinking. You think about, they're never thinking about uh, the Word of God. They're not applying it to the life. Let's just say that they heard it. They enjoyed it. They even said to someone else, man, that was a good sermon. But unless it's applied, unless there's some intimacy, unless there's some dwelling uh, um, t with that Word, there's no transformation. The Word of God is not a book. Like I said hundreds of times, it's not a book. It was never meant to be a book. But as long as you treat it like a book, it's just going to be a book to you. It's not meant. It's not a book. If you want a book, go down to Barnes & Noble and get you a book. But don't treat the Word as if it's just another book, another story, another little lesson. Don't treat it like it's a 10-step program. That's not what it is. It's made to, it's, it's written and it's been anointed and appointed, it's been given to us. It's more than, I've heard people say, well, it's, it's a, um, it's a roadmap. It's more than a roadmap. It is, it is the living, breathing word of God. It's meant to be transformed by the manifestations and the promises that God has for you, if you're not seeing them, if, if blessings and favor is not chasing you down, then you need to consider, am I dwelling? I'm not picking on anybody. I've had to do this myself. It's my son. Hey baby, can I call you back? I'm doing a um, a teaching on Psalms. <laughs> Are you okay? Okay, when I'm done with this, I'll give you a call and I'll help you with that. That'd be fine. All right, love. I love you. Bye bye. Okay, sorry about that. All right. So he says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge. There again, why is it saying it like that? Because God has always given you an opportunity to take ownership. He wants you to take ownership to his word. He's always given you the opportunity to speak life. He's always given you the opportunity to prophesy into the existence to remind everything that's not like him who in which whom you are serving so that's that scripture because thou has made the lord which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation because thou has made is there's been an ordination that it's been established it's been appointed to be transformed into is also what that means the beginning of verse 9 is telling you, again, because thou hast made means you must be transformed into. Let's see if I had this paper that I wrote this something down on. I don't know what I did with it. So there we are again. This verse 9 is proving that in order to dwell, to, in order to really um, 
position yourself for receiving. So you got to understand, it's not that God hasn't done. It's not that God hasn't healed. It's not that God hasn't provided. It's not that God hasn't done all, brought all these things to us. It's not that he's not done something. He's done everything. The problem, the reason why we're not seeing the manifestation of it is because we don't know how to properly receive. A lot of people know how to give, believe it or not. But the receiving of something, we get in a mindset of, I want to say a gambling mindset. Now, I've never gambled and I don't know anything about all that. Or we get in this mindset of like a rolling the dice. If I do this, then maybe God will do this. We get in this, it's a, it's a really a lie from the enemy and it's really a uh, religious mindset is what it is. That if I do this and this and this, then God will see that I'm a good girl and then he'll do this, this and this. If I do this, this and this, then maybe I uh, will hope uh, we'll do this. You know, a lot of people, that's how they pray. That's how they fast. That's that's their relationship with God. That if they are doing something good enough, then God will maybe have mercy on them and show them some love. <laughs> Which I don't even know. I don't even know how that ever began. I'm going to be real because it's it's opposite of what the word has said to us. And so he is saying that because thou hast made, because thou hast decided to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you have made the Lord your refuge, even thy most, the Lord, the Lord there means Jehovah or the existing one, which is my refuge, my shelter from danger. It also means when he says, uh, the Lord, which is my refuge, even my most high, thy habitation, that word right there, thy habitation, it says thy dwelling place. Go ahead and circle, underline habitation, and put to the side of that, my dwelling place. Okay, so it, it, it could read like this. He that dwelleth, he that makes a decision to remain in him. In the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. He will deliver me from the trapper and that which traps me. He shall cover thee uh, with His feathers. Under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. His truth will completely surround me. Thou shalt not be afraid. For the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not approach me. It shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have been transformed, okay, the Lord which is my refuge, even my the Most High, even though He is the existing one, the great Jehovah, He is my dwelling place. Isn't that powerful? That is powerful. He is where I dwell. Intimacy, relationship. That's what that means. Now let's go on to verse 10. There, there, where, there, dwelling, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. <laughs> there shall be nothing bad, no evil shall be allowed to meet me. No evil shall be able to cause to be, to, to, he will have no way in, to, he can't even be sent. That's what that's saying right there. No evil because I'm dwelling, because I'm remaining in what the word of God says, because I'm hidden by this dwelling place, because I am 
dwelling, I am covered by the existing one, Jehovah. And that I am, nothing is even being allowed to be sent to me. Remember, because the reason why verse 9 says that is because of, um, of, let me, let me see where we, because remember when he said, um, in verse 3, that he's dwelling will protect you not from the trap, but also the trapper. Listen, he can send, put, uh, put weapons of warfare against you, but they're not going to prosper if you're dwelling. One reason is because you're covered, you're hidden. He can't find you. Understand what I'm saying? So verse 9 is saying that because I've been transformed by the renewing of my mind, by his word, that my refuge with Jehovah, the existing one, that I am that I am, there is nothing can be allowed to meet me, nothing can be caused to meet me, nothing can be sent to me that's evil because I am dwelling. That's powerful. Okay, verse 10. Is that okay with everybody? There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling place. Nothing shall be sent, neither shall any disease, no virus, nothing that makes wounds. Nothing's going to be, I'm not going to be marked by anything. Anything that presents itself as a disease will be able to present itself in the place of my habitation. That word thy dwelling means the sacred tent of Jehovah. It is the tabernacle, the anointing place of God. That's dwelling. That is dwelling. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful? So, one more time, verse 9. Because thou hast made thee the Lord, because thou hast made a decision to dwell, is my refuge, even the most high, my habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh this place of dwelling. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. I hope that encourages you today. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Pastor Chris. Good morning, Aunt Laura. Gina, Stormy, good morning, everybody. Isn't that powerful? <laughs> and we're just going to continue and continue. So tomorrow we're going to look at 12 and 13. Then we're going to probably wrap it up. But I hope that I've been able to give you something out of Psalms 91. Give you a little, de little bit more depth of the meaning but then when you read Psalms 91 just know that the whole entire thing is asking the question will you dwell will you decrease so that he can increase will you trade off your filthy rags for his righteousness will you be transformed by the renewing of your minds it will prove the perfect will of God in your life, according to Romans 12, 1 and 2. It's not his plan for us to be conformed. You can still minister conformed. You can prophesy conformed. You can still love Jesus conformed. I know because I have. I did it for many years. God is faithful and God is merciful. But there came a moment where I said, Lord, I, there's more and I want everything I want to know everything I don't want to miss anything that you have and when the Lord showed me he that dwelleth every the whole word began to open up I began to see scripture in a whole different way because see I'm not satisfied to be part of the multitude I don't want to just go hear him teach and I don't want a, just a miracle by his hand Matter of fact, I don't want to live miracle to miracle. That'll wear a person out. 
I want to know my Jesus. I want to have an intimate relationship with his word. I want to be transformed by him. Therefore, favor and blessings will chase me down. That's what I want. That's what I hope that you desire. Let's just pray together for just a minute. Father, we thank you. Lord, in this time that our country finds itself in, there are people that are in fear. There are people that are doubting. There are people that are angry. There are people that are stir-crazy right now, Father. I ask, Lord, I know because you spoke to me months and months and months before this even happened that you were dispatching angels. Lord, I, we activate those angels by speaking your word today. Lord, every person under the sound of my voice, remind them there is a place of peace. It's where you are. Lord, remind them that you are joy, that you are our Redeemer, that you already paid the price, that it is finished. We don't have to be sick in our bodies because through the atonement of Jesus, we were not only saved, but we were healed and we were delivered. You truly are the existing one. God, I pray right now for wisdom for these pastors. I pray that you visit them in a special way during this time. I pray that you would strengthen them and anoint them to speak and minister and, 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 and throw out a net over their communities that will draw them into you, Father, because that's where your peace is. Father, I thank you for every minister out there and every ministry, Father, that they will not see um, their um, tithes and offerings decrease but increase. I thank you for my partners. I thank you, God, for those that have made the decision to partner with Harrison Ministries. That even in this time of not being able to travel, not being able to go out and do my meetings, God, you are my provision. You are these people's provision. I pray for the, those ones that have jobs and they can no longer go to work. They're being held back. Lord, I come against that spirit of fear, of lack. In Jesus name because through dwelling you promise to be Jehovah Jireh you have promised in your word to be the provider Lord I thank you father for our truck drivers that are traveling the roads to bring uh, goods and the necessities to our stores Lord I thank you for these stores that their workers are having to work overtime and and they're dealing with people and then having to go back to their houses Lord, we pray for our medical staff our nurses and our doctors father i ask that you send ministering angels each to every hospital every nursing home right now across this country and father we lift up our president and our vice president we lift up father this government to you lord you said in your word for that we are to pray for these people God, I ask that you would strengthen their body right now. I ask that, Father, that I know that I don't know they're saying that they're getting very little sleep, Father. But, Lord, I ask that you began to give them dreams and visions uh, to, to help orchestrate direction right now in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we just come against all manner of sickness and disease in this country, Father. You said in your word that we had the authority to speak, Lord, and we ask right now, Father, that more and more Christians would begin to dwell and walk and talk in the authority given to them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Father, I wanna pray for our church in Athens, their pastor and their people. We wanna pray for them. They're, they've reached out to me this morning. They're stuck. In Honduras is that how you say that they're stuck over there and they can't get back home and so we just want to pray for this church in Athens father that you would give them peace right now and Lord let them know that they are a church without walls and even though they're not they feel stuck they're not stuck you're still going to provide you still are their peace and while they're there they are still going to minister Jesus to those people in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus if you have a prayer request or a question not saying that I know everything but I know a, we can figure we'll we'll find it we'll find the answer together um, 
we if you need us for anything or if you're whatever you're going through you can personal message me and uh, we can chat through there or you can go to harrisonministries.com there's a place for you to um, uh, read about our ministry uh, also um, I feel led to say this too I remember when my dad I'm gonna say this I'm gonna let you go I remember when my dad um, had died for three minutes when they resuscitated him and they got him back the next day I got on the phone and started booking him revivals <laughs> I did and the pastors I would call would say um, but I, I thought he's in ICU I said he is he died yesterday <laughs> they resuscitated him but he's coming out of here he's gonna be strong when do you want your meeting with him <laughs> I, I started booking him in revivals that was my act of faith so I do have meetings coming up they haven't been canceled they just been um, moved to a different date but if you want us to come to your church your place of worship and hope, let's go ahead and book it let's book it by faith and uh, we'll come to your women's conference um, your ministers conference your if you want a prophetic encounter revival whatever you want um, then we will do it we will do it but anyway you guys have a wonderful wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow God bless